what is going on everyone and welcome back to more black desert so today was a big day today was patch day a lot of cool stuff happened we got the megu awakening and uh some actual dark knight buffs that i knew was happening a few weeks ago but when you google translated it it didn't really make sense so we're going to cover that today and give you my thoughts and opinions and show you what's happening also for all of you out there who haven't already gotten it there's a dreaming horse thingy that you can combine, you know, the rocking horse that you got a while ago from your mailbox. And then today in your Y tab or this thing, um, basically they give you the second piece. So this is what it is. You just uh, manufacture them and then you get to pick your dream horse or mythical sensor bundle. Um, let me see. Does this have a expiration date? No. But anyway, you get a free tier 9 horse. I assume it is unsellable in the market. Yeah, it says so in the tooltip. Um, I talked about this about two videos ago and told you which ones to get. So I would assume 99% of people are going to get an Ardenaut just because that one is generally the most wanted one. And followed by the either Doom if you are a PvPer, which is really nice to have, or... If you grind in the desert, the unicorn. But if you are already, I guess, late game and have tier nines already, you can get the mythical sensor bundle, which is five of these, and then you can slam them. But honestly, like, if you look at it in terms of value, um, a maxed out tier nine horse is about 12 billion silver. Making a mythical sensor, I have definitely done a lot of clicks on tier 10, and to roughly about one and a half to two billion each so technically getting the horse is more value however getting the mythical feathers and everything actually takes a lot of time so basically if you're looking at it from a monetary value even though you can't sell either of them um horse is technically better and especially for newer players i would definitely get the horse but end game players a little bit less but ultimately at the same time it's not a big deal i think i might get a Another Ardenaut, just so I can have it. But anyway, yeah, so let's talk about the Dark Knight changes right here. All right, cool. Let's scroll down. All right, so in today's update, the PvP of Succession and Awakening Dark Knight were increased for PvE performance. Oh, thank God. Good news. Firstly, for the Dark Knight Succession, the duration of the attack speeds uh, increase of Unveiled Dagger has been increased. Cool. Uh, this addressed her new need to renew the attack speed increase effect too frequently. Yeah, I noticed that. And the ability to combo with Blooming Black Rose has been improved. So, basically, Blooming Black Rose is the ability that we got from the Magnus. And I personally thought it was fine. But it wasn't, like, performance-wise fine. And so what did they do to it? They increased the damage of here, uh, as you guys can see. And it also combos with comma slash and spirit legacy skills. So here's the thing. If you are playing Succession, spirit legacy has been one of those abilities that you can't... There's no, like, hotkey for and so basically you would be hitting the button on your hotbar and then following it up by a right mouse button so it looks it would look something like this and it looks like that and then oh hold on let me hide that so either way you can combo it with comma slash and or uh spirit legacy so if you're holding if you're holding this down you can now combo it I guess that's cool. Honestly, I see more people who play Dark Knight comboing to comma slash with a Nocturne just because, or, um, yeah, it's like Nocturne comboing it to go behind. And it's, it's a little, there's a lot of different combos. If you play Dark Knight, the one cool thing you get to play with is the Nocturne ability. Where is it? This one? Because it allows you to go invisible for a split second, and then you hit a directional key, and then what you pick uh, will determine where it goes. So, like, do you want a certain guard, or 
you want to go behind the enemy so that's where a lot of the combos come in and this it's kind of unique so i think that's cool now that you can uh do things improve the combo more smoothly from blooming black rose um let's see turn this back on so ravage rake this is a succession thing Ex like you could use it in awakening but you really don't and so once again i know it is succession changes but let's see improved a combo more smoothly from blooming black rose all right so ravage rake this is this skill and i guess this you usually what i would do is open with that and then you would i guess you do that more but then if you want to you could just does that feel smoother i don't really know it just it feels the same but then unveiled dagger is your basically this one is an opener and then down attacks which ooh, it's kind of weird that's a down attack instead of a stiffen or something which I think would make more sense, but it, whatever. Um, so basically, the attack speed went from 10 seconds or 10% for 5 seconds to 10% for 10 seconds. That's a big change, actually. So usually in the fight or for 1v1, you would get behind an enemy and then oh, hit them with that and then Nocturne or something and then just open up with all your other abilities. So Unveiled Dagger, definitely a very good change. I like it. Um, good to know. So let's look at the numbers right now. Uh, Blooming Black Rose from this one to this one. Honestly, I never really see people using this ability, Blooming Black Rose, much in PvP. It's more of like a filler cleanup for PvE. Like if you're grinding and grouping everything and then you hit your all your big abilities. And then this one is just a filler to finish up like the last 2% on an enemy. So the fact that it got buffed, that's always good. Uh, prime enforcement one to three um in theory it looks like assuming these are balanced like as in they up the pve damage but then they nerf the pvp uh to the point where it's more or less the same in theory it's a 10 percent buff and honestly i'd never really thought that enforcement it is this ability right here I guess you can't see that. Hold up. So I never really thought that you enforcement needed a buff because I thought this is a really, a really strong ability. So like if you were to down attack someone as in like an opener from unveiled dagger before, and then you were to combo enforcement, that would usually do a lot of damage, but I guess it's a PVE change and I guess that's good. Cool. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's good. Prime Wheel of Fortune. Uh, I definitely didn't think Wheel of Fortune ever needed a buff. Or, yeah, Wheel of Fortune definitely did not need a buff, but I'm glad I got one. But actually, now that I think of it, I wonder if they're tweaking this bot or like the damage based on what they saw from the boss splits. Because, for example, if you've seen videos of people doing the higher Calamity 6 and 7 bosses, Wusa's, Zerkers, and Shy's do really well. And then DK's are just not. So I wonder if they balanced that based off of the feedback they saw from boss splits. So that could be it. Uh, so I guess that's good. Comma slash. More damage. I didn't really, like... It's a very interesting one. Comma slash. I always thought people just used it more for like being able to get to the side of the enemy and CC them. I didn't like I know people use it in PvE, but I didn't think it was a main damaging ability to the point where it was like a mandatory one. It's obviously a very good one in PvP, that's for sure. But I didn't think it was supposed to be used too much for PvE. Like you do use it and I do a lot. But I thought it was more of a PvP skill in my eyes. Uh, Ravage Rake, which is what we saw. This is kind of one of the ones you use a lot in succession. And so now that it does more damage, I think this is a very good change. Um, Lunacy of a Deer. This is a heavy ability, which means like 
I when I talked about this in another video of my skills, I categorize it for beginners. So like this is how I talk about them. If you are a beginner watching it and you have no idea what all these skills are, I categorize them into light, medium and heavy attacks. As in heavies do the biggest damage, they are the slowest and you don't spam them. Whereas lights are considered like less damage, but you use them more frequently and mediums are just like a balance. So I would consider Lunacy of Vadir definitely one of the heavier ones, as in it does a lot of damage, but you only use it like once every nine seconds on, on cooldown. So I'm glad this one got a buff as well. That's cool. Overall, pretty happy with the changes. Uh, I didn't really notice it too much of a difference between Ravage Rake into Black Rose, but I mean, if it got changed and it looks more smooth, that's cool. Um, the fact that you can use Blooming Black Rose with more abilities into a combo, that's good, I think. Um, let's start, let's look at Awakening. Uh, I, I do have an Awakening set. I don't, I play Succession more, but... Let's see what changed spirit blaze this is this ability i always thought that this is one of the abilities that you would hotkey because you would use spirit blaze into the flow of this one and most people just put this flow on their hot bar and just skip the first one <laughs> and then that's where the uh down attack and smash comes in so improve to combo more smoothly from spirit blaze i think that's a good change it was definitely one of those things where okay so it would do like a sweep and then the flow would sweep again. And so it was really slow to the point where in PVP, uh, people would just like grab you or literally, you know how the meme goes of like, just don't get hit. You see the first one go and then someone just like literally walks out of it. So now that combos more smoothly, I think that's a good thing. Uh, Root of Catastrophe. This is definitely a big main skill sh like shattering and Catastrophe are the two big main ones. Um, and also believe that most people use the core ability with, uh, this one just because it gives the super armor or I've also seen some other plays with different ones, but for the most part I've seen, like, I think the general majority of Dark Knight Awakening players will probably be using, uh, the core of seed. So the cooldown has been, uh, changed from eight and a half to eight seconds. Um... I think that's good because right now, like these are the two abilities you would use in a combo. And so having it previously from 8.5 and then seven, it felt a little bit weird. So if it's just a one second difference into, instead of 1.5, I think that's good. It fits better with your rotation. Um, so yeah, I think that's, it may not seem like a lot to a newer player, but if you've been playing Dark Knight for years, that's a pretty big change actually. Uh, Spirit Legacy, the cooldown has been changed from 11 to 8 seconds. When used on cooldown, or like during the cooldown, damage has been decreased by 10.6%. What was it before? I don't know. Like, Spirit Legacy is one of those abilities you can use infinitely, but when you're using them on cooldown, it does less damage. That's not a new thing. It's always been like that. Um... The fact that that got a three second change, uh, it looks like it says 10 seconds, but every level up you get, it goes down by one second. So from 11 seconds to eight, that's pretty big, actually. It, it works better with your flows and seed and shattering and seed. So I think that's very good. Three seconds off is huge. Um, Spirit Legacy. Where is that ability? It is... The damage increase. Cool. Uh, this is probably one of the bigger hitting things, but now they got improved. I think Awakening might actually be more competitive. Now, here's what I thought. We're lucky for... Dark Knights, both Awakening and Succession are very viable. Whereas, you know, if you play other classes like Berserker, for example, there's Succession or you're bad. And <laughs> so for Dark Knight, I think both of them are good options. And so now that both of them got buffed, I think that's really good. It just makes them even more competitive together. So I might actually try that out again. Uh, 
both the seed of catastrophes and the flow got boosted that's huge i might i might try this for boss splits because doing some of the bosses like bari for example and apex changui one those are the ones you have to be super mobile and doing more damage along the side is very good uh cluster of despair is a huge damage ability it's kind of like a flow but for a lot of other abilities and so that was a huge damage one and i think that's huge dark nebula it was very situational in my eyes but now that it does more damage that's good uh grip of grudge it I've seen people use it in PvP, but it's one of those things where it's situational. Like, if you miss that Grip of Grudge, you're getting grabbed and it's over. But, once again, I think, obviously, these are more PvE changes. So, I think that's good. It fits in. Flows well, really well. Uh, Spirit Blaze and Flow do more damage and it combo smoothly. So, I'm going to have to try that later. I think this is one of the biggest changes, along with the cooldowns. And... Yeah, that's like these are huge changes for awakening i think awakening might be very competitive even more than succession now but yeah i think awakening got the better of the buffs which is good um yeah that's kind of what i wanted to talk about today and yeah let me know what you guys think are you if you're dk mains what did you think of these I think these are overall really good awakening changes. The succession ones, they're okay. I mean, just like more damage is always good, but I think just overall as a quality of life with cooldown changes, I think awakening, awesome. I might try that out a little bit later and good luck everyone with your uh, horses. If you are going for the mythical sensors, good luck. I would actually hold on to them until they make the change i don't know when but apparently they're gonna have fail stacks for tier 10s so i heard they're also buffing tier 10 horses or the pegasus as well so if you if you're going for a tier 10 this is what it looks like there's the default uh red and black and gold one i thought that one was fine but then this is like the changed one and um yeah the difference if you're going for a tier 10 pegasus is basically these bottom three abilities so like when you're gliding in the air let's say you jump just jumped off a mountain right uh you could just die from like 100 to zero and pretty instantly compared to just gliding floating down slowly which is awesome uh soaring wings and wings of swiftness is like just big hops up and down and then this one is the soaring wings is probably the coolest thing you can do with the horse even though i don't use it often it's like when you get stuck on a mountain somewhere and you're just like let's say you're in duvincroon or dregan somewhere Right, and you've definitely jumped off and then missed it, and you're stuck mid mountain, and you're just like, "Oh God, what do I do now?" This is basically what you do: you up E, and then it just floats you in the air. So like, if you get stuck, you just keep hopping upwards, and then you float infinitely, and then it uses your stamina quite often. But like as you guys can see, my hands aren't even on the keyboard and just keep floating. So yeah, I think that's a awesome change. It does drain the stamina pretty quickly, so that's the only thing. Um, and then you just go down when you want to. But other than that, like, yeah, good luck everyone. I thought it was a huge thing that they're just giving everyone tier nines. So if you haven't played in a while and you just watch my videos for some reason, uh, yeah, come back, just get your dream horse log in and then <laughs> log out again, I guess. But overall, good changes today. Might do some uh, Megu Awakening stuff a little bit later, but there's also a new story quest that we have to look at in the uh, Morning Light thingy. So it's like a new boss that came out. So let me show you. Uh, Black Shrine. So yeah, there's a new boss that came out, and then we're gonna have, we're gonna try it later on this week. Uh, unfortunately, I used mine for the week, so. We're just going to have to go through the story and then play it from there and see what happens. But yeah, next reset, we'll definitely be trying the new boss. So, oh god, I put my auras in the blue one again. Anyway, that's about it. You know, it kind of bothers me that they didn't organize it. Because, you know, how they're separated by... It's not a big deal. But I just kind of wish was, they put it, like, over here, for example. But anyway, that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. That's all I wanted to talk about today. If you're new to your channel, hit that subscribe button. Love to see you guys come back. And we got some cool stuff coming up in the next few days. And I'll see you guys later.